Let's create a run cycle. The rig I'm going to use is still from the crash pack of Long Winter member. I chose this rig because it's clean design with no face, no details. Uh, makes it perfect for body mechanics movements. Uh, the first thing to decide is what type of run we want to create. The posture of the run is very, very important to communicate. If is he running away from something, uh, running towards something, running, bringing an heavy weapon? Uh, these are just some examples. You can also decide if choose uh, for a realistic approach or something more cartoony. Use all your imagination and creativity. Of course, also the character design should influence the posture. A strong and athletic man will probably have a fast and dynamic run. An overweight character should uh, have an heavy run, a tired run or something more clumsy in addition uh, to an accentuate up and down. If we have a girl, she would probably have a more feminine and graceful posture and shorter steps. Then we have to decide the speed of the run. Uh, these are just an average frame so per step. Uh, of course it depends on the style of the run you want to, want to create. Uh, just do some tests to find the best timing for your run. Uh, an average speed for a normal run is around 11-14 frames per step, uh, a fast run around 8-10 frames. I will show you a middle speed run. I set the timeline to 23 frames because uh, I have to sum the two steps. Then we had a frame at the end to duplicate the first one in order to be able to cycle the curves. So we have a total of 23 frames. You can choose uh, the pose you want to start with. Uh, this depends on the type of cycle you want to do. Uh, in my case, these are uh, the poses I'm going to create for this type of one. The two extreme poses are the down at frame three. That is also a sort of passing pose. Uh, and the up at frame eight. And then we have a pose at frame five that is pretty close to the up that I call it uh, the push pose because it's the moment when the lag behind push the weight of the characters upwards. And then we have the straight leg poses on the first and last frames that uh, is a sort of contact pose where uh, the leading leg is straight and close to the ground but the foot doesn't touch it yet. In this phase the blocking I go to pose the entire body so I'll go to pose uh, both the legs and the arms uh, even if in the refine phase I will animate just one arm and one leg at a time and then uh, I mirror the animation on the other. Uh, I do this because uh, during the blocking I have to decide the posture, the timing and the spacing so for me it's better to have the entire body in blocking in this phase. Uh, so let's start with this first pose. The left foot is the leading one and I move it forward. I also move down uh, the cog a bit. Um, the leg is completely straight and the foot is really really close to touch the ground with the heel. Uh, I rotate the foot upward but if you have a heel roll uh, use that one. The right leg is behind in the air. The foot point down back, uh, the leg is a bit bended. Uh, to give more strength and power to the run I also uh, rotate the cog uh, toward the leading foot. Now let's move to the arms. Uh, I bend it, uh, I move the shoulders, I obviously put forward the arm on the opposite side of the leading foot. So in the typical run pose, uh, more or less with a 90 degree rotation and I also pose the hand curled in a fist. For the head, I move it forward also with the neck. Uh, when you rotate it, be sure to also rotate upwards the head in order to have the eyes positioned at a good height. Our character have to look in front of you and not on the ground. Okay, so now we have the first uh, poses done. I copy everything on the last frame. We need to have the same poses at frame 23. Uh, and also in the middle of the cycle at frame 12, but this time I have to mirror the values. So now set the curves in spline and just for the feet in linear. At frame 3 I create the down pose, that as I said is more a mix between a down pose and a passing pose. So the leading foot now is flat on the ground, uh, it already starts to move backward, uh, the right leg is going to pass forward. Um, the hip is pretty low at this point, uh, I bend much more the chest and 
I also rotate up the head. Now I should create the push pose at frame 5. Uh, I want that uh, the character has a sort of pose in the air. So I will go to uh, play with the spacing. I speed up the spacing at the beginning. Then I go to slow down it uh, in the last part. Uh, why? Because uh, as you can see in the final version, uh, we have this little crack in the air. So the character stay more in the air than on the ground. I choose this kind uh, of one because it's very uh, snappy and cartoon. So uh, I like this timing and I want to explain you uh, how to do it. So uh, set all your curves in spline. Um, we have that on pause and uh, if you scroll on your timeline and you go at frame 8, you set a key here and you move it back up to uh, frame 5. So let's adjust the position of the feet. Um, we go on the left foot and we set at zero all the rotation. Um, so the left foot is going backward. Uh, sliding on the ground and we use the heel wall to bend it and we also adjust the toes. We move more uh, forward to the right leg that is almost in front of the character. The foot is still pointing down. Let's add the last pose for the blocking, the extreme up pose. Uh, we go to do what we've done before. We set the key at frame 10 and we move it back on frame 8. So we go again to slow down the spacing in this part, then we move just a little bit of cog up. Okay, we, so we have uh, all the main key poses, uh, let's copy and mirror them on the other step. So now we can convert all the tangents in step in mode and we create the first play bus. Uh, let's convert the curves in spline and let's put the cycle on what we have done so far. So now I will go to work on one leg so I can hide the rest of the body. This rig is really nice for this because uh, each part of the body is separate, it's a separate mesh so I can easily select um, the mesh and create uh, some layers to hide the parts that I don't want to visualize. Uh, the first thing I do is to add a keyframe at frame uh, 13. That is the frame before the down pose where I want that the foot touch the ground with the heel. Then I go on the graph editor. I select the curve on Z and on this key the 13 I break the tangents in order to can be able to switch in linear this part and uh, I do the same with the tangent at frame 16. Now I can delete the key at frame 14 because I don't need it. So now we have this part from frame 13 to frame 16 in linear and this is where the foot touched the ground and I can keep this part uh, when the foot is in the air in spline so that the movement is well smooth. Uh, let's go back to the view scene. I work in the side view now. So I go to polish all these poses. I adjust the foot rotation, especially when the foot is in the air. And don't forget to animate the toes, uh, the final part of the foot. Uh, this helps to make the movements more fluid and realistic. Offset the toes animation of one frame compared to the animation of the foot. So these are uh, the main poses when the foot touches the ground and when it leaves the ground. Let's move in the front view because I want to animate the rotation left and right. I rotate the foot a bit externally in the street leg -like pose but we immediately uh, rotate it at zero when it's flat on the ground. And then when the feet is again in the air, we go slowly uh, to rotate it externally again. Keep attention to uh, knee position. Use everything you need to avoid a huge pop that could make your run look hot. So use uh, the stretch of the leg, use the formers, use knee control, also, uh, for the feet arc, use motion trail to adjust the curve. Uh, to do that, you select the feet control 
and in the animation tab go to animate create editable motion tray then in the show panel select motion trays so in this way if you keep selected the control of your foot uh, and you scroll in the timeline you can see uh, the curves of your foot and you can adjust it to make it more fluid as possible so this is my run cycle and this is uh, the curves of my feet so as you can see we have a part where the feet create uh, straight curves because uh, they touch the ground but when they are in the air we have a smooth nice curve we polish the curves in the graph editor and let's see the result Okay, so now we mirrored this animation on the other leg. So now we have the same animation for the leg that move at the same time uh, with the same movement. Uh, so we need to uh, move forward uh, the animation of the right leg in order to have an alternate movement of the feet. So I select all the curves of, of the right leg and the knee control and then move them forward in the timeline up to frame 12. So now the feet moves properly, but now my cycle is longer than 23 frames because the curves of the right leg starts from uh, frame 12 to 34. Uh, so I want to have all the keys in the range of 23. So I have to adjust these curves. Uh, I keep selected the right leg and knee control and I open the graph editor. I go on the timeline at frame 23 and I create a key. Then in the graph editor I delete the last key because it's just a duplicate of the first one. I select all the keys starting from frame 23 and I drag them in the first part of the cycle at frame 1. I duplicate the key of frame 1 to uh, frame 23. So now my cycle works perfectly and we just need to readjust the tangents uh, at the beginning and the end of the cycle in the graph editor. So now the legs uh, animation is in the range of 23 frames. Let's visualize the chest um, and I go to polish this part as well. I offset the rotation of all this control of uh, two frames. I polish the curves. Now the head, um, I move the head and the neck, so we add uh, an up and down movement. Uh, when the body goes down, the head go up and so on, and we do the same uh, with the rotation. Uh, let's show uh, one arm, uh, the right one. Let's offset the curves of the forearm and the end of the wrist and I clean the curves. Let's mirror the animation on the other arm but uh, I also want to add a variation in the timing and the pose of the arms. Uh, I want that they move a bit differently so I offset a bit the curves of 1-2 frames and I also uh, change a bit the pose. So I play with the curves in the graph editor. So I change uh, the rotation of the arm compared to the right one. So this is the final result. And here is the same one with the motion blur that helps to make uh, everything more fluid, especially because it's a very fast animation. So a motion blur uh, makes it look much better. That is all. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching and have fun with your run cycle.